there's nothing like raising cattle in Hawaii. There are ranches and grazing lands on nearly all of the islands, and for the men and women who care for the animals and their land each day. Their job is filled with challenges and rewards. Hawaii's landscape and climate is incredibly varied, and that variety directly impacts how they care for cows, raise calves, and manage the state's natural resources. Well, gosh, Hawaii is a, a whole different bird from most any place on the mainland in that you can go from uh, an extremely arid climate to extremely wet within 10, 15, 20 miles. So, and within a real close proximity, not very many miles. So it, it creates a whole different variety of, of situations and pluses and minuses on, on how you run your operation. There's a lot of extreme contrasts and so it's important that the cattle are able to adapt. Our cattle really um, really have to be adaptable from sea level all the way up to 8,000 foot elevation and from dry desert country to uh, more wet uh, rainforest type area. My dad said we got this piece of ground because no one else wanted it and it's kind of the truth. It's one of the toughest, most rugged pieces of real estate that a cattle operation is run on in this state. But oh, what do you got to say? You love it because it's not an easy piece of country to work. The animals have to want to work with you to make it work because you can't cowboy this country. It's rough, the lava is relentless, uh, unforgiving. Uh, if you think you're just gonna run out there and do something, I've fallen in a hole. My horse, my dog, everything just fell right in a lava tube. So the country's non-forgiving and you have to work with it. And I'm serious, uh, when it's raining, Cattle don't want to work, livestock don't want to work, but a beautiful morning like this, and everything wants to work. Hawaii ranchers are experts in raising cows and calves. Some ranches finish their cattle on grass and market their beef to local stores and restaurants. Others ship their calves to the mainland for finishing in feedlots. Either way, all of these operations are dependent on managing grass to keep their animals healthy and growing while ensuring that their natural resources are maintained. We have a huge variance in our microclimates and our, our annual precipitation in a very short relative distance. So it gives us the ability with our with intensive grazing to adjust very much to where you are on the mountain and to your pasture and weather conditions. That really is the only advantage we have for ranching in Hawaii is that we can grow grass year round. And so in order to do so though, we do have to have rainfall year round. Mother Nature, uh, when she gives it to us, she's pretty generous, and when she decides not to give it to us, it can be pretty tough business. But for the most part, managing that resource, that's our primary responsibility. That's what we focus on. We do a lot of rotational grazing. We try to manage the forages so that uh, we have an optimal amount of cover. Basically, uh, try to prevent the weeds from coming in as well. One thing with handling our cattle with intensive grazing, you're, we're moving them. Some herds will move every day, some will move every other day just depending on where they are and the, the size of the, the paddocks they're in. So our cattle are really used to having people around and, and they're, uh, most times they're waiting for you at the gate. They'll tell you when it's time to move. You know, you, you graze them one way for a cow-calf operation, another for stalkers, and then you gotta really get intense when you're finishing cattle. And every little hiccup can mean a big gap in gains. We think we're headed in the right direction and we just gotta you know, just keep our eye on the ball and make sure that we, we continue to improve it every chance that we can. Again, you know, grazing is, uh, is a year-round occurrence when we, when we have the opportunity. And so managing that forage resources is key to our success. So we do some intensive grazing where we move the animals fairly quickly. And every couple of days, we'll be moving these animals to a different pasture. And that allows the grass to recover quicker. Ranchers work to match their cattle breed to their landscape and climate. And they manage the genetics of their herds so their cows have the ability to thrive and produce the highest quality calves. Mama cow that you just drove past would weigh 13 to 1,500 pounds. Just a mile that way, a cow can't weigh more than 900 pounds. Just that's how diverse this country is. The soil out there is thin, uh, relatively new eruptions and 
dust blown in from other eruptions where the land can support a bigger cow is there's pockets of deep soil, more mature soil types. You know, because we have such a diversity of climate and altitude, the Angus Charley Cross, which has been more market driven than environment driven, has worked well for us here. I think because the cows and the, the bulls that we use are um, born here and are uh, acclimated locally. So we're looking out for the nutrition of that cow when she's pregnant. We're looking out for the nutrition of, for that cow and that calf when, when she has that calf at her side and is raising her up. We basically run uh, primarily Angus cows on the ranch and we have two breeding seasons. We try to match it with the, the rainfall that comes throughout the year. So we have basically two production cycles going on all the time. Uh, we're primarily a cow-calf operation here, but we've been transitioning to raising more cattle for local beef production as well. My vision for the future of ranching in Hawaii is a growing uh, grass-fed or somewhat grass-fed beef program here. Most of the cattle are shipped out of state, and uh, I certainly hope uh, that, that we can develop the industry here in Hawaii where the cattle are, are kept here. It's more green if you want to call it, but it's also something that would add to the, uh, the food security of Hawaii. Uh, if we can develop infrastructure and demand in Hawaii to keep the cattle here, it'll be good for everyone. Beef production in Hawaii has been one of the, uh, the stable primary sources of agriculture. We've been a very resilient industry. There's a lot of opportunity for us to continue to be uh, a large part of the food production. We see it uh, uh, actually increasing over the years. There is opportunity for us to do so. Uh, the forage resource, if we can take advantage of that, we can probably double our beef production uh, for the state of Hawaii.